Bam, we're live. Good morning, David. Good morning, CrossFit Corey. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Kenneth. Bam, that's right. Haha, -ha, forever waiting on Sevon. Oh, don't do that. Uh, I want to tell you a couple things. These shirts are now available over at Vindicate. These are the Miami shirts. We will be in Miami, and we will be talking about Miami today with Brian Friend. The event there is called Wadapalooza, put on by Loudon Live, and we will be there in full force uh, this year, giving you the behind-the-scenes live like we did last year. It was probably At the time, it was probably one of our crowning achievements. It was pretty cool, uh, especially that day that they got um, rained out and we were able to uh, stay live via iPhone and uh, the crew over there has been awesome uh, with us. I believe the lady's name is uh, uh, Shayna. Brian, do you Sasha. know? I'm sorry. Sasha. Sasha. Sorry. Sorry. Sasha. Uh, um, Matt Souza had the honor of meeting her over at the uh, Zelos Games. He said she was a wonderful lady, and I'm excited to work with her this year. I do believe she has replaced um, last year's uh, media director, and so I'm excited um, – I know Sasha is going to absolutely murder it. What's that? That means you were the best media there last year. That's your media award for best media. All the. This means I whooped Scott Polensky's ass in games the other day. Oh, geez. You interrupted my story for that. Uh, yeah. Scott Polensky is uh, Brian's. Um, uh, Disc golf friend. Ultimate Frisbee partner. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Uh, Hans, good morning. Uh, Elise Carr Riddow. Uh, yesterday we had a show. Yes, Brian. I first met Sasha in, uh, in in London at Strength and Depth during the sanctionals. I was on the sidelines uh, working for the broadcast there, and she sidled up next to me, introduced herself, and we've had a good working relationship, uh, different competitions every year uh, ever since then. And uh, Brian, uh, you'll be happy to know after his uh, debut at the Zealous Games uh, commentating and then after he fucking absolutely smashed it uh, for the Dubai um, – event he will also be the uh head commentator at uh wadapalooza this year and that's going to be exciting i want to say this true. about oh that's not true no oh uh, I, I do want to say this um but i will be involved with the broadcast yeah he will be involved with it. that's what i meant if you look at all the year if you if you watch when, when i watch the crossfit games or when i watch any of these events i watch them on my huge 90 inch tv in my living room with my feet up and i, I watched when 60 inch used to be a big tv i do i remember when fucking 40 30 to 40 was crazy i was hoping you would take it all the way back there so we could just get a perspective for how long you've been around even 32 inches was nuts i, I used to watch a little black and white tv like this that i thought was cool <laughs> no no shit i'm not even joking and um uh when you see the comments scroll by you will see a lot of really mean comments and unjust comments. I Where? did not see – just on, when, when I watch these events because oh. we watch them on YouTube. So on the screen, you can have the comments going by, and they're just ripping on people. And I want to say that uh, during uh, Dubai, I did not see one negative comment about Brian. I've never, ever, 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 ever seen that. Do you know what would happen if I commentated? Holy shit. Okay. Uh, so it, it, it's nuts. Congratulations. Uh, yesterday we had Garrett Glinton on a uh, CrossFitter out of Long Island. Um, and this was the, one of the responses I got. I will be reading. I got so many responses. I, I can't wait to speak to Garrett to see all the responses that she got. But I just want to share this with you um, to start the show uh, just because it's important for everyone to hear uh, this, this, um, I'll be posting this on my Instagram. If the person, um, who sent it to me says I can post it, but I want to read you a line from what they wrote me. The biggest thing that I hope you share with your boys is that no adult has any reason to have a secret with you. If my parents had emphasized that to me from a young age, I don't think I would have been groomed by a pedophile because one of the questions I had asked Garrett Glinton was, oh, why didn't you tell anyone? And you were molested from the age of 8 to uh, 12. Why didn't you tell anyone? And, and her advice, and this is great, if my parents had emphasized to me from a young age, I don't think anyone – sorry, let me repeat that again. If my parents had emphasized to me from a young age, I don't think anyone would have been groomed by a pedophile. And that emphasis is um, 
Uh, no adult has any reason to have a secret with you. Tell your kids that. No adult has any reason. Why does my uh, exposure keep changing? No adult has any reason to have a secret with you. I'm going to tell my boys that today. None. No adult. Well, <clears throat> some might have a reason to, but it's not a good reason. Right. Thank you. Uh, your show has really changed my perspective on so many things. Uh, as a 23-year-old, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Want to know a secret? Please. There's an underground group of people who follow this show who have a running every show that um, a certain person comes on. They have a bet. It's an over-under bet of when he'll say this something for the first time. When he'll say what for the first time? Anything. Oh. Instead of just sitting there staring at the camera looking handsome. Oh, yeah. Oh, so if Caleb talks, they have to drink. No, they put a bet. Oh, that's it might be awesome. Seven minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then you take sides. Oh, that's or, it's, or they played it like the price is right, where you pick a number and whoever has the number that's closest without going over wins. I read in the YouTube comments, this, this fucking hurt me so bad. I hate it when the YouTube comments hurt me. It said, God, Caleb's so funny. Fucking <laughs> broke my heart. I'd die for one YouTube comment that says that. Sevon, you're so funny. What the fuck did Caleb say? I don't know. I need to go back and watch that show. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'm not a big uh I'm not a big color fan. Like I struggle with the whole Miami scene, but um these are the shirts and um yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Did you shirt. do something to make the background behind you darker today? No, I don't know what's happening. I, I, it's something. I, maybe something got bumped on my camera or something because the exposure keeps shifting. Not the, yeah, the exposure. Like I get darker and lighter. It, sh it should be just set to a uh, manual, and it shouldn't be like. I don't You're not squaring the shot either. Seven minutes. Thank ahead. you. That's Seven driving minutes. me crazy too. That's just because I'm lazy, and after the show, I have to pee and run away instead of making the adjustments. Jessica Valenza, Valence, Val, Jessica Valenzuela, Sevon. You are so funny that you make me pee my pants. Well, thank you. Dang. And the lies just keep pouring out. Thanks, Evan. You are so funny and handsome. Um, I want to uh, bring up, uh, we have a little public service announcement here um, that I wanted to share with you guys just the first few seconds of this video. Um, Caleb will pull it up here before we get to the meat and potatoes of this show. Uh, it's, it's only the first, like, 15 or 20 seconds that matter. Here we go. Action. If you've got big titties, you already know that squishing your melons into an oblivion trying to do things like chest support Dumbo Rose isn't it. One option would be to substitute in landmine barbell rows. If no landmine attachment, you can create one by popping your barbell into a corner or between two bumper plates. I use a handle from a cable machine, but you could even okay. use a hoodie so or a towel. Okay, there you go, if you have big titties. Just make Unfortunately, sure this girl has pronouns in her Instagram. Guys, t take that shit down. You, it just screams, I'm an idiot. Okay, um, it just means you can't critically think. And you hate people and you want to put people into uh, – you want, you want to force people into things. It, it, it's, it's not nice. You think it's nice. It's not. Okay. And uh, finally, um, I, I want to ask Brian uh, way off the CrossFit board. Um, Brian, do you know what's about to happen in your city on January 1st in Chicago? Oh, are, are, are you fucking aware of what's about to happen? <clears throat> and are you scared? I don't live in the city limits of Chicago, and I don't know. But do you, feel free to tell me. Okay, here here we go. Uh, Chicago. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. First, first, listen to this, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna read something um, to to you. Frank and Spalding are shooting this game bangers versus game bangers. They're shooting across at each other. Let them do it. Spalding, let it be. Middle. We have two gangs shooting across the street from each other, and the dispatcher is saying, "Let it be." Um, but uh, if you go to – oh, the top one, Purge in Chicago. I, I, you guys have to see this. This is fucking nuts. But well, you know why he's saying let it be, right? So that they don't get shot. No, because they've been told not to intervene. Oh, that's oh. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair. They did that shit in um, uh, California also. Uh, but look, go up to Purge in Chicago. So there's this law that's passed in Chicago that's going to take effect January 1st. It's called the Safety Act. 
And it's crazy because it's crazy watching people try to defend this law. It's absolutely batshit crazy. I contacted Hocus, who went to jail for four years um, uh, and then was found innocent, what he thinks about it. And he says it's a, the full-blown purge act. It's fucking nuts. It's, this is fucking absolutely nuts. For, I want to read you two lines from this, and then we'll get Brian's opinion. Um, those that enacted this uh, safety act believe it will reduce arrest and limit those put away based of, on the crime. Well, of course it's going to do that. I'm going to tell you why in a second. Those that instated the act believe it will reduce arrest and those put away based on the crime. Well, y yeah, if you get rid of laws, you will absolutely <laughs> reduce the number of arrests. This is fucking nuts. Now scroll down a little bit more. Okay. There are, there are 12 non-detainable offenses where the law would end cash bail. The laws include second-degree murder, arson, drug-induced homicide, robbery, kidnapping, aggravated battery, burglary, inti burglary, intimidation, aggravated driving under the influence, fleeing and eluding um, drug offenses, and threatening a public official. As of January 1st, there's going to be an adjustment to those what it takes to arrest someone for those, and then those people would be released. You can't hold them with uh, bail. Brian, are you scared? You're expect. You're really expecting me to give my opinion on this? No, I'm not. But I just, I just can't. I just, I'm, I'm concerned for you to be honest. <clears throat> but I'm also kind of excited. I'm excited to. I'm excited to watch just crimes. It's going to be crazy. I mean, Chicago is already so dangerous for people who don't know. It's not like my neighborhood where I can just walk around in my underwear. Some people would consider that quite quite dangerous, actually. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Not I for you. Asked. For everyone that has to see it. I haven't asked my neighbors, but that's uh, very possible. Uh, tomorrow, uh, back to CrossFit, or, or CrossFit for the first time here. Uh, tomorrow, I'm at the very top where it says Fit Wars. Uh, tomorrow, um, uh, oh, welcome everyone to the All Things CrossFit Brian Friend Show. With C Beaver, uh, tomorrow uh, uh, Fit Wars will launch its first inaugural event. Uh, two fantastic athletes. I think we're gonna have a blast watching them compete. Uh, the athletes are Colton Mertens and uh, Scott Tetlow, uh, both uh, hardcore, serious. Uh, the the what I know of them, these guys, these guys are gonna go. Um, these are both guys who always leave it on the floor. Uh, impressive athletes. It's going to be fantastic. Has Scott been to the games, Brian? Yep. But okay. Uh, only the online version. Okay. So uh, both games athletes, uh, Colton Mertens, uh, obviously a um, hometown uh, favorite. Uh, Patrick Clark, can't believe Sevan got Brian on while Croatia-Morocco game is on. I, I can't believe it either, by the way. Let's not bring that up again. It's a uh, heated start, by the way. 1-1. One, one. Oh, already? 10 minutes in. Wow. That's uh, pretty common in the third place game for there to be a lot of goals and just a little bit more open flow than than many of the other games. Kind of like an all star game, like they're just going. Yeah, I mean, you want to win the third place, but like you were so close to the ultimate glory of making the World Cup final, and you didn't. So, it's a does fun the winner game. get more money, Brian? Probably. Do they have to share it with the girls' team? <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Christine Young, I saw a giant blow up Christmas beaver <laughs> in my bedroom last night. I saw a giant blow up Christmas beaver inflatable and thought of Caleb yesterday. How sweet of you. That's good. <laughs> uh, Real Brian and the crew did a hell of a job breaking down Fit Wars yesterday. Yes, if you would like to um, watch something that's um, part Three Stooges and part uh, Sports Center, you can go over to Barbell Spin and watch the video of uh, uh, Brian Spin, uh, Mike Halpin, and Tyler Watkins uh, talk about the event. They've already started breaking it down. You can also go over to Jason CF Media. He also has a video breaking down the event. It just shows you how slow things are in the CrossFit space right now that everyone's giving this so much attention. Um, the well, event great is timing to, uh, by, by Nick to plan it for now. F f fabulous i agree uh wad zombie it, this this event is being um hosted by wad zombie 
Uh, it starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It will be streamed on um, Hiller Fitz channel, which is complete bullshit. Uh, and there will be a pre-show that will be better than the actual show, and that will start over here on this channel at 7 a.m. Yep. All of the completely insensitive Americans are going on that show that have no respect for the World Cup final. Exactly. That's, please, please. Um, you can. Oh, I, I want to show you one more thing too, in case you'd never seen it before. If you click on that um, uh, Jason CF Media YouTube channel, for those of you who have never seen Jason, and uh, you want to see, uh, you, they used to have these commercials when I was a kid. That what a difference a day makes. You can see Jason CF Media in his regular street clothes at the beginning. <laughs> Well, no, there he is afterwards. So there he is all cleaned up in a suit, and there he is not in a suit. Let's look at him in a suit again. And then there he is in a suit. So there, there you go. You never thought you'd see it, but there he is, Jason CF Media, wearing a suit. I think that just means he sold out. He probably got a sponsor or something. Um, also, uh, lawn uh, chair uh, uh, leaderboarding, lawn chair leaderboarding, uh, the app, and website that's run by um, Tyler Watkins uh, will have some ways for you and your friends to bet legally, just cookies, not money, on this event. You can partake in the event, get a bunch of friends together, go to lawn chair leaderboarding, um, and, uh, and, and you guys can play a game around the event, make it more interesting, have more on the line. There you go. Barbell, that's the barbell spin guy, right? On the yeah. on the lawn chair leaderboarding. Yeah, I remember that he was promoting that uh, LSKD. I think giveaway for the person who was able to win during uh, Dubai. I think they did this. Oh, he was working with them. How come no one's working with me? He's just been supporting uh, Tyler's initiative on the app and trying to drive his audience over there. Are are they working with that brand LSKD? Uh, I mean, they obviously had some collaboration for this. Um, which is cool. And I, I think we talked about it before. You know, he's a guy in the media. Tyler's got this app thing that's going on. They've been working together in a lot of different regards. They were able to bring in a sponsor all in the in, you know, interest of supporting the event. I would like to get a sponsor. More sponsors. I wish I wish betting and CrossFit was a thing. I would make it would make it even more fun to watch. Um I just looked for for an app. No, no, that I just made that part up to make it sound like they were big time. There's actually no app. You have to go to the website. Don't ruin my story, please. There is an app. Oh, there is an app? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, fine. There you go. Where is it? Elise Car Radow, please stop calling it an app before you give Corey a heart attack. Well, there is an app, but there is an app. Brian just said it. Uh, what sponsors do you want for the show? Ones with money. PC on the prowl. He's going to find you someone. Online gambling. 3%. 3%, Patrick. 3%. Always 3%. Okay. Um, Fabian's feet. No, we won't start there. Uh, Brian, what's the, what's the, what's the deal? Um, you, you released this article. I was actually surprised at the article. Not that you, uh, yes, I get 3%. Um, yeah, Coca-Cola, totally. Let's do it. Coke and a smile. Um, there is an article that you wrote in – I didn't give you a link. Sorry, Caleb. There's an article that you wrote in um, Barbend, okay. your new home, uh, where you talk about the um, winners of Dubai and Rogue. By the way, you also you also say that those were. Uh, did you compare those to the CrossFit Games? Thinking that you, I think you may have said they were as exciting as the CrossFit Games. I thought that was really going out on a limb for you. You're not well, a man of hyperbole. I don't know exactly the sentence or whatever you're talking about, but in terms of the closeness of the competition in the men's side of things, we've had a, a as exciting a year as ever, really, between the CrossFit Games, Rogue, and, and Dubai. The margins have been very small, and there's been several people involved in those races right to the very end uh if you if you go to google and you type in bar bend and then brian friend that's that's the only way you have to use google if you just go straight to bar bend you'll never find brian you'll think he's lying about working there basically if you find my author's page 
then you find any, everything I've written there. And in the article, you do more than allude to the fact that the, um, that the races were so close and that, um, that may, maybe the, the correct winners were not chosen. And specifically, what's interesting, what you, what you speak about at Dubai is that the use of the stopwatches, I guess, as opposed to chips, and that there were some races that were, I think, three-tenths or three-one-hundredths of a second um, different, and that could have been the time that it took to push uh, the stopwatch. Does that bother you, or is it like, hey, it's a balance, it's a balance field because, it, because it's, um, at least it's consistent throughout the event? I mean, yes to both, I suppose. It's just when you when you see the podium, the distribution of cash on the podium, it's 50K, 30K, 20K, I think. That's $100,000 that's available for three people. And when you look at the final points, it's 625, 625, 620. So immediately, I want to, I, I have to just ask certain questions like, Damn, that's an incredibly close competition, which, like we said, very exciting right up to the last thing. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people think that Fukowski's one step might have cost him, you know, $30,000 in this case. I don't think he would have won anyway based on the math. I think that he would have tied Moritz and Moritz would have had him on the tiebreaker. So it actually, that step cost Moritz $20,000 and only cost Brent $10,000. But that's just one little thing out of the course of the weekend that can make a difference there. So the first thing is, is that really the best scoring system that we should be using? Because five points per place across everything for the whole weekend, when it comes down to it, 625, 625, 620, it's like, damn, I'm, and I know that in some, if you just add up their places, that it ends up being very similar. But if you look at some of the discrepancies in terms of how well someone did on something compared to someone else, the margins are really small in some places and really big in another, but the points gap is similar. This is where, you know, this is what Tyler's been saying for years is the type of thing that a different scoring system can account for. Obviously, it's still get, probably going to be a close race, but you may have a better approximation of fitness, assuming that fitness was tested fairly and, you know, in the same manner for the athletes in all the events. The close scores are what we want to see as the viewer, right? We want to go into the final event and, and, and either watch Fikowski win it or watch him lose it by just, you know, seconds. That's where the tension is. That's where the excitement is. And and there not only the that. The contrary is the women's field. Karen Frey had a 90-point lead. Two women had already withdrawn from the competition. She's getting 10 points either way. She's already run three workouts. She's unbeatable. All she has to do is the work. Is, I don't even know if there's a minimum work requirement. She may not even have to do the final to win. That's not that exciting. And and it's an easy scoring system to follow, yep. As the viewer, but what you're suggesting is if that there is a, a fairness component that could have been if there were three levels, what makes it exciting, what makes it easy to follow, and then the third one being what's the most fair to pick the fittest person. You're suggesting maybe another scoring system and no stopwatches. And are you suggesting the um, Z score as an option? I mean, if you look look at the the leaderboard for Rogue. Same scoring system, 735, 720, 715, 705, 690. Then there was a 70-point gap. So that's the top five guys, Madero, Smith, Adler, Velner, Krenikov, all within 45 points of each other. 45 points over the course of, what do they do, eight or nine scored events that, maybe 10 scored events, is like nine total places. Between five guys over 10 events. It's really small margins for error without a lot of, like you can only earn five points per space. So, you you know, you it just limits the way that you can test fitness in terms of the reward of the points. So I think it's worth exploring. Um, I'm not saying it's bad. This is a bad scoring system. And as long as the scoring system is known, it's fine. But, you know, sometimes we're left with situations like this. So let, pause there for now. Let, let me ask you this. Do you think Rogue picked the fittest man and fittest woman? Do you think, let, let me rephrase that. Do you think that the, the winner was accurately chosen? Do you think the winner of Rogue for the men was Justin Medeiros and for the women it was 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 Laura Horvat? I'm proud oh, of you. Damn. I was going to say Annie for a second. I do think those were the fittest there. And, and do you think that they, they should have won? Probably. But... You know, when I like <clears throat> some of the examples I gave in the article, 
for Justin Medeiros in particular, you know, the big question was that rep on the last lunge of the first lunge, the first section of lunging, the last step that he took on the turtle workout. He ends up taking 12th on that workout. I believe it was his worst event by four spots. Oh, no, he had 16th on Texas Open. 12th place, second worst event of the weekend. And his time was 258.81. There was a lot of tight times in there. Um, so he, you know, if he doesn't have to go back, do that extra step and, and come, there's a chance that that workout plays out differently for him in his favor. He's not going to get less points. Was it a bad call? I'm not saying it was a bad call. I'm saying it was a questionable call that was made that cost him some points relative to the field. In the case of uh, did he should he have won the competition? I think that the thing that bothers me the most was that was the way that the Texas Oak event was administered for the men in particular. You know, they were briefed that they oh. would have a certain setup, and not all the athletes got the certain setup that they were briefed they would have. And because of the way that the rules were written, which is a way that I do not like for competition, which is all you have to do is lift the log off the mat within the 45 seconds, and then you can continue the whole lift, however long that takes. You have to have, if you're going to have that rule, you have to account for the fact that it's going to throw off the timing. And so there's a better way than having the MC be responsible for keeping track of the timing in his head as the crowd's going crazy and people are lifting big weights and there's four lifters at a time and the logs are rolling all over the place. And some people have to stop now, but others can go then. And the tent's supposed to be 15 seconds, but if, we, if they lift, then we ha it's so confusing. So that's why I like Dubai's format, where you have 20 seconds to finish your lift, and it's done. And if you're, you can't pick it up at 19 and then stand there for 10 seconds, maybe doing it, maybe not. It throws off the pattern for everyone else. But if you want to do it that way, then record three, two, one, lift, three, two, one, rest, so you can stop and start it when you want to. Not when the MC thinks he should, but the judge is saying no, and there's a miscommunication, and suddenly Jeff Andler only gets 30 seconds instead of 45 seconds. That really but, did happen? That really happened. The log was all the way at the front of his pads, flipped up upside down. They were told the log would be replaced in the middle of their pads with the handles facing up. Because of that workout, in the, I think, obviously a cool workout, but the, the, the design of it was poor because you didn't foresee the potential for massive ties and even if you say, no, no, they did. They had a tiebreaker. Well, the tiebreaker had nothing to do with the, what was being tested in the workout. And it was too small. Those were margins of error that were ridiculously small. So would Adler have lifted the log? I don't know. What I do know is if he had lifted that log, that he didn't have the appropriate amount of time for based on the written rules, that he would have been the champion of Rogue Invitation of this year. And that's a lot of money on the line. $200,000. Well, he's, you know, he still got third, so he won something. So we maybe would but yeah, at least a hundred thousand difference. And and there's more going on the fact that if you have thirty seconds, you get ten seconds less, and and that whether you you made or didn't make this, but it adds to anxiety. For for all, for all we know, it may have rushed them. Sure, I mean, and there, there's a lot of different pieces. Event, it's something new. We know that these athletes are good at picking up on new things. Yes, some of them have done the log before. Yes, they announced it ahead of time. But how many athletes, between the men and the women, picked up the log at some point, <laughs> missed a lift? And then recompose themselves and picked up the log very close to their end of their interval and hit it the second time. A lot. What do you, you know, think the tiebreaker should have been? <clears throat> I a lighter sure. log, a lighter log, shouldered overhead, max reps in ten seconds or something. Um, I think that you think it should have involved the log. Yeah, probably, or maybe they should have had smaller jumps. Or they should have oh. said something, or you, or just say something like this: If five people go out on the two seventy log, they're going to be ranked based on who lifted it first within the time interval. If you did it oh. in ten seconds, oh. Caleb did twenty five, and I did fifty five, then you're oh. first, Caleb second, I'm third. Like I like that. I like you know. that. Hey, that's not a, that's, the Jerry can uh, race once across the field. Yeah, that's actually really cool. I just watched uh, Gordon Ryan and um, Nikki Rod go at it yesterday. Uh, at jiu-jitsu and after it was it was one 20 minute round and it was a tie and then basically the tiebreaker is uh is is based on how long it takes you to either submit someone in short two minute rounds or to get out of uh like what a rear naked choke it was cool i like that time piece and then and then and then if they both lifted it at 19 seconds then then it actually would be a tie right 
Yeah, and that's okay. Two, for two yeah. people to tie is fine. What you what they wanted to avoid and what they did avoid with the Jerry Cam break, tie break is seven people tying at the same lift. But you should probably try to design. I mean, I would think that you would try to design an event where that's not going to happen anyway, where you're going to have a huge percentage of the field going out at the same log. Uh, good morning, Wad Zombie. Wad Zombie is the host of the – hold on. Fit Wars uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. on Hand Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Hiller. Andrew Hiller's uh, YouTube station. Just go to Hiller Fit. You can start watching at 10 a.m. If you actually want to give two shits about the event, you will start watching the show at 7 a.m. over on my channel. We will have Chase Ingram, myself, JR. I'm guessing Caleb. There's someone else we invited. We invited some people to talk about it. And Colton and Tetlow <laughs> will both be on the show. So it's going to be cool. Um, when, when you write an article like that, what is the – is this just something that's going like, – like you see that happen at Rogue and you make some notes and then you see some similar stuff happen at at, uh, at uh, Dubai. And it, it, is that when you're just like, you know, this needs an article? Like how, how does that form in your head? This needs an article because I'm a little concerned that maybe there was a better way to pick, pick, the, uh, to pick the winner. Or are you like, fuck, they pay me this amount of dollars every week to produce so many articles. I better make some shit up. I try not to let the second thing dictate my workflow. Okay, good. I, I want to, you know, write about the things that I think are interesting, uh, compelling, maybe unique. Maybe they offer a perspective that would be hard for most people to have if they aren't in a position that I'm in to see certain things, uh, or, you know, some, you know, because the sport is uh, the 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 following of the sport is just like always evolving, and we've talked about this before how there's not often. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are following the sport now that just picked it up within the last two to four years of paying attention. And maybe they've increased their um, interest because of shows like this that have provided them more opportunity to learn more about athletes. But like the other article I wrote after Dubai is about Karen Frey. And I and like that is a historical piece where I'm putting in context what she's done there compared to other athletes who've done well in Dubai and showing that because of her success there, it's not out of the realm of possibility that she could have a pretty good season next year. And so I'm not just saying, um, which uh, other some other people like to do this. Karen Frey did great in Dubai. I think she's going to do great in the games next year. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd say. <laughs> and I would say, well... Yes, Fabian Benito also did great in Dubai. You also think he's going to do great in the games next year? He hasn't no. made, ever made the games. No. So that on its own is not a good reason to say someone's going to do great at the games. Okay. But Karen Frey has a fourth and a second and a first in Dubai. And when you look at the list of women who've won in Dubai besides her, and then you look at what those women have done in the games, and it's Annie Thor's daughter and Jamie Simmons and Laura Horvath and Sarah Sigmund's daughter and Sam Briggs, suddenly you realize, oh, that's a pretty prestigious caliber. And on the women's side of things, success in Dubai has translated to success in the games. And you might come back and say, well, this was Karen Frey's third game, and she really hasn't done that well yet. But 2019, she got five events. So did Laura Horvath. So did Annie Thorsar. So did Brooke Wells. You can't really count that year as a full games experience. 2020 was online. It's completely different. She just did her first games, the full games. And guess what? Three of her best workouts were the last four workouts. So what she's proven to me is the volume's not a problem. And as mm. the weekend wears on, she knows how to manage that thing. Obviously, she has certain things she's better at than others. And, made the, and like Laura Horvath, those just showed up later in the weekend. So she was able to do better on those later in the weekend. But if she wasn't prepared for the games or the volume of it, then she wouldn't have excelled on those anyway. So I'm not worried about that. And how many athletes, and in this article, there's actually a cool, if we scroll down a little bit, there's a cool um, graph that I made that shows several high level games athletes who have not done great at the games in their first year and then have the set the following year or that they competed at the games. Sometimes it wasn't the exact next year. Yeah. This one did a lot better. Katrin David's daughter, 24th to first BKG 26 to third Yona Koski 36 to ninth. Now those are drastic improvements. These other three are the ones that I'm more interested with regards to Karen Frey because she finished 20th this year. Sam Brinks first game 19th, followed it up with a fourth, eventually won the games. Hopper's first year, 19th, followed up with a seventh. That's something that I think is more realistic that we could see from Karen Frey. Is, uh, are, are there um, any uh, similarities or parallels to Karen Frey and Laura Horvat? I would say yes, in, you know, in certain regards. 
I think that they have some similar skill sets for sure, just generally being some of the stronger women in CrossFit, but they still have enough aerobic and, um, and gymnastic skills. There's like, they both take a hit on certain gymnastics things relative to the field, but they're also decent on the other ones. Um, and I also just think from a mindset, you know, and, and like a mental approach, they're not necessarily the most outgoing athletes or people, but they're really good. What I call like really good soldiers. Like they just put the head down and get to work, whether it's training or competing or recovery. Like when they, they know it's time to do something, they just do it. You think she's making it to the games this year for sure? Karen? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, barring injury or, you know, something really weird with the worldwide ranking format and the qualifying spots that I don't expect, I don't expect that will happen. Then yeah, I think she's a probably, you know, I would say she's a, a good bet for a top five finish in the European women's semifinal. Uh, speaking speaking of different countries and national champs, what's the deal with um, uh, choosing national champions? How is CrossFit doing that? In two thousand, I, I thought it was the the winner of the Open was the national champ. So, I mean, if you're from Armenia, the six people who enter from Armenia, if you're the best guy in Armenia, you're in the Open, you become the national champ. And you know, we would see some weird things. You would always have to explain to me, look. I, um, you, there was an example in Canada. Maybe you can bring up. I keep forgetting what it is. But but whoever won the Open in Canada was the national champ. But that wasn't the person who ranked highest at the games, and it was always a little confusing. Right. Um, so have they, have they um, modified that for this la last year? Do, how did they pick the national champs last year with only three Open workouts? I'll preface this by saying, if anyone has actually seen an announcement from CrossFit explaining the process for picking the national champions. I'd love to know that when it was announced and what it is. By the way, that's a really important thing. By the way, I, I'm not, I'm not a big fan on this uh, whole in, in word inclusive, as you know, it's a trigger word for me, but if, if you want to be inclusive, you, that would be where you start, get the national champions thing very clear and correct. Because obviously as uh, like you can see around world cup, uh, national champs uh, bring a lot of pride and attention to uh, – would bring a lot of pride and national attention locally to the sport. Then all the local news stations in Romania can be like, yeah, this guy is the national champ. So this, And the confusion here like goes back to – I think it was 2020 maybe where Jeff – Oh, Adams sorry, sorry. I apologize. Phil McCracken. Canada and confusing in the same sentence. Duh. Oh, you're a good point. Okay. That was very important. Thank you. Yes. Go back to, I think it was 2020, maybe 2019, something like that. But I think um, it was either Adler won the Open. Remember this? Adler won the Open worldwide, but he got second in Canada, and Vellner was the other guy. I think maybe Vellner won the Open worldwide, but Adler won in Canada was what it was. And so Adler was declared the national champion. And so the national champion was in Canada was Adler, but the worldwide champion of the Open was a Canadian guy that wasn't Jeff Adler. Right. It was like, weird. What? And of course we understand how that works because they're scored on two different leaderboards, but it just, it was, it was like, nah, it doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right about that. No, year. it's asinine. So all of a sudden last uh, week or so, these national champion announcements start rolling out with, and I don't know why, if you're CrossFit, you wouldn't just say in 2022, we picked, uh, we awarded the national champions based on this criteria. And here's a list of all the national champions on the men's and women's side and just publish that. You can definitely still put out as many Instagram posts as you want, uh, uh, highlighting specific ones or groups of athletes. You can send the certificates out. Athletes will repost it. But I would love to, as someone who's, you know, passionate about this sport, have an article out from CrossFit that says, here's our criteria and here's our list of national champions from 2022. Congratulations to all of them. And you could even add a little thing uh, where we'll show next to that the number of times that athlete has won the national champion in their country. And then suddenly you got a pretty cool list with pl plenty of stuff for people like us to talk about organized in one area. Instead, as is so often the case, there's no, no information that I know of about how they pick these. And you can't go to one place and just see the whole list. I mean, I guess we could try – we could ask Mike to make the list. Well, it's funny you say that. So this is from five days ago. This is December 12th. Oh, good. Okay. In the end, 286 CrossFit, CrossFit athletes stood apart. They were the fittest athletes in their countries and were crowned the 2022 champions. 
You can represent your country in the 2023 Nobel CrossFit game. Uh, how it works. Okay, maybe they do say it here. Let's see. Every athlete who signed up for the Open was ranked against all other athletes within their country, and the men and women who made it the furthest in the CrossFit game seasons were crowned their country's national champions. Okay, so this is what we were looking for, right? This is exactly what we're looking for, yeah. If multiple but athletes finished in the same stage, the athletes who ranked higher on the leaderboard in that stage were awarded the title. Yeah, so I would be curious. I don't know if it was the case or not, but if uh, let's say there were two women from Sweden that both finished eighth place, one at Lowlands, one at Strength and Depth, and neither of them decided to do the last chance qualifier, who would win? So stuff like that. And they do have the list here. So this is great. What? So my Why does it take till December 12th? When, when did the games finish? Why does it take wow. till December 12th to come out with this? Now, another question that I've had is, like, are the games results from 2022 final? Have we gotten confirmation that all of the people that were podium athletes in all the divisions have passed their drug tests and are actually the, the winners of those divisions? And I'm not sure if that's been announced or not either, because it's not like this article is, is exactly what we were wanting for. But I didn't know it was out there. Why didn't I know it was out there? I get every email that CrossFit sends out. Maybe it was in there and I missed one of them. Maybe they did put it on their Instagram and I missed it. I don't know. Hey, um, here's a suggestion that CrossFit keep a list of all the people who are in the media space and anytime they have major announcements like this to help amplify this and their athletes, they send that email out to those people who are reporting on it daily. Right. Because I would, I mean, if that was the case and they send me this, I would, like you said, I would make it very aware. Hey, CrossFit's announced all the national champions from 2022. Check it out here. But instead I just see a random Instagram post announcing a couple of them. And I had a, and I didn't, I didn't know this was out and I didn't, and I had a question of, uh, how is, how are they determining this? And is it different than it's been in the past? And I might even have added in that article, um, this is a criteria we use this year and it's different than we've used in previous years. We feel this is the best representation of who the fittest in each country is. G guys, um, uh, the UFC, uh, holds the record for most seats ever sold at Madison square garden ever for any fucking event ever you know why do you know how much outside why Ring girls. <laughs> uh we are that's 42 minutes into the show people 42 minutes no and no he seconds. said something at seven minutes you missed oh it. shit all right all right the I money's already been i wasn't listening to caleb again <laughs> uh why why brian why small footprint the, the ring is oh, small, the ring's so so small more, right. more areas for seats. Do you know how much outside media they have and they accommodate? If you are running an event and you are not – if, if you're not – you don't even – here's the thing. You don't have to even support or like the outside media, but if you cock block them for ego reasons, you are hurting. You are absolutely hurting your uh, – your um your event what what's best for you i've never it's so obvious of the ego conflicts going on over there at hq media it's fucking crazy you're you're only hurt and in the end you're only hurting the affiliates remember that in the end you're only hurting the affiliates when you do that so obviously i should walk back what i said like it's nice that they have that article then the, De december 12th i'm going to give you a pass december 12th the five best days thing ago. would be that they have i know article. you've been preparing for this show for 30 days so <laughs> that they have that article and that everyone, it's impossible to miss it, you know? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it, the, yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Um, so we know who the national champs are. If you want to go over and look at that like list. Your uh, you're people in this, uh, that follow this show regularly, they're very plugged in and tuned in. As we were talking, as I was talking about that, did, did someone send you that link? No, no, no. Like, did I did, did it. announce it? No, no. So none of these people that follow the CrossFit sport really well knew that that existed? No. That's what it's, I'm saying. It's, 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 it's free. It's free media too. Like this is real. Like you, you really want to, there's a country. Let me see, Let me look at the names of these, some of these fucked up countries on here. Third world shitholes, as they say in the political scene, there's a country called Ecuador. <laughs> why not? Why not um, set this up for success for them to promote CrossFit in Ecuador? There's another country called Senegal. Hook them up. Hook them up. This is this is free, easy. If you were to push something out to each of these countries and let people know, here's another fucking country, Lebanon, Botswana. The local news agencies will pick up on it. They're desperate to promote successful people in their country. Belize, Albania, 
I mean, it's an extensive list. Hey, and this is what a great way to strut your shit if you're CrossFit. Look at all this uh, Nicaragua, the Syrian Arab Republic. I don't even never even heard of that one. It's called Syria. There's a that, few of those in uh, in Syria. New, new new ones popping up every day. There's just there's just new Syria popping up every day. It's like the it's like Congo. There used to be Congo, it's a big country in the middle of Africa, and now they're like split into four Congos. I think maybe Sudan is like that too. Did you see that? Did you see that video, Brian, on the live Colin show where the president of Sudan was getting South Sudan was getting inaugurated and he pees his pants while he's being inaugurated? No, it was crazy. If you're if you is there an if explanation? You, no, he, I mean he's just old and, and, and incompetent. But he, he, no, he forgot to put on his diaper. Listen, if you wet your pants in public, uh, wear black pants. Don't wear blue, light blue. Oh, look, here's a here's a. Here's a guy named P. Roy Mao, who's the national champion of a country called Nauru, N-A-U-R-U. I don't think there's any I. That's a country? It's in the, it's in the Oceanic Islands. N-A-U-R-U. Did I say I? If I did, I'm sorry. Where is it, Brian? Like by Fiji over in, the, in Oceania, off the northwest of, um, sorry, northeast of New Zealand. I wonder how many participants they had. God, I should just enter for Armenia. I have an Armenian passport. There it is. Hold. That's a country? Yeah. There's a bunch of them like that in Oceania. A pull out? I want to see where that is. Wow. Holy cow. That's like Easter Island shit. Did, did somebody have to like take a boat over there and teach them about CrossFit? And did they like... Well, really Sean, nervous? that's actually a brilliant question also. Why wouldn't they post alphabetically by country? Cause that, cause they don't have the manpower to do that or the IQ, the cumulative IQ of the team over there is okay. I'm going to be nice. Brian, Brian's going to be announcing the games this year uh, and I don't want to make it weird for him. So people are walking up to me like, why do you work with Savon? You've never heard that. Have you, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Caleb? <laughs> I, I own a globe. Listen, I own a globe. I've been everywhere. I've been to, I've been to Nairobi. That's Nairu. a snow globe. Oh, the one with Santa isn't Santa in it isn't the one he's talking about. <clears throat> I know. Yeah, I do have to be able to snatch a hundred pound dumbbell to be the Armenian champion. Um, Brian, let me just throw you a curveball here. Let, let me just ask oh, you just a, a random question here. Um, uh, in, in uh, we got to get her on the show here soon. What's going on with Haley Adams and her in her new coaching situation? The last we heard, for the the story went like this. Um, uh. Haley Adams, one of the greatest CrossFitters in the world, has significant hole in her games. It's been talked about for several years. At the end of this season, there were uh, rumblings that she was going to go to HWPO. Those rumblings were uh, put in. Those rumblings, I think, were basically just based on just watching her and Mal eating donuts as they walked around Manhattan. And uh, then uh, we had Rich Froning on the show, and he mentioned that they were putting a team around Haley. Uh, of, of coaches, including, I think, uh, the great Chad Vaughn, uh, to, to work on what she needs to do. She also didn't show up at Rogue this year, which uh, was, gave us the, um, allowed us to make the implication that she was more serious about her training and probably focused on her strength and didn't want to derail her training by focused on a competition. And now here we are at silence for a couple months. What, what do we know about her? What's going on? That's Any all. That's it. That's it. I just did the whole thing. You're out of a job. You could have gone taking a pee break. I should have done that actually. Okay. Uh, uh, no, nothing. No, nothing. I mean, I think nothing. that. <clears throat> the, I Can think we see your IG, Caleb? Sorry, Brian. Go ahead. Yeah, I think the. Um, you know, her and Mal have a friendship. They also have the same uh, agent right now, and so you know, he's probably trying to create opportunities for both of them. Um. And yeah, she's, as far as I can tell, she's been, it's been pretty obvious. She wants to get stronger and she's sick of finishing, you know, fourth through ninth or whatever her range of finishes has been at the games over the last several years. She wants to improve her opportunity to push for a podium position. And she doesn't think she'll be able to do that if she doesn't take the time to put in the work consistently without interruption to, to try to get as strong as possible before next year's games. I mean, her fitness is good enough that she's not, she's not so worried about the semifinal. 
she has to get to the games and be stronger. She doesn't want to be standing there in the middle of the Coliseum, unable to move the first barbell while all the other ladies are racing past her anymore. So I think that this is a good decision for her. She's still very young. It's not like she's <clears throat> short on opportunities to make money in this sport through sponsorships or competition uh, over the next 10 years. And so I think it's a smart choice. And, you know, the, the, uh, the question is how much, how much will it pay off? And we'll have to wait to see. How many, how many followers does she have? How is she not the most popular female CrossFitter? How old is she? She's young, right? She's 21, 22. Yeah. God, what a fucking crazy specimen of a human being. It, uh, it is interesting. Like, Brian, would you agree with this statement that what we've seen happen to her and Laura Horvat, where you see them get stuck on the field, um, are the two most, uh, they're the two highest profile athletes we've ever seen that happen to in CrossFit. It, it, Catherine it, David, sir. She's had similar oh. experience with the barbell. But not, oh, oh. not while she was winning necessarily. More recently. Uh, I, I, I thought you were going to second... say. I thought you were going to say pegboard. I, I, which what are you talking oh, peg, about? Oh, that's right, pegboard in 2015. Uh, but that was a lot of women. You know, it wasn't. I don't think that that was necessarily like specific to Catra. And and there's still women now that struggle with the pegboard that are high. You know, high caliber uh, athletes like Amanda Barnhart has had some struggles with pegboard, but. Uh, a couple of years ago, also on the clean run event, the second clean run event, Katrin was stopped in her tracks, I think by the second barbell and that workout and her and Haley were just kind of standing there while everyone else was running and lifting weights. I wonder if that feels better when someone's out there with you stuck. I don't think at that point, I don't think you care about it. What anyone else is doing, you're just fucking pissed. Can you be out there and be happy? What's the mindset you should have when you're out there if that <clears> shit <throat> happens to you? I mean, it happened to Daniel Brandon with the back attack workout at Rogue. Like, it happens. And then I actually think that in some capacities, <clears throat> it's a good it's a good uh, experience for athletes. You know, you have to deal with something like that. Now, he'd already done a lot of the workout. But, yeah, he was clearly frustrated. Matt Fraser with the rope climbs in 2015. Rich with rope climbs. Uh, Catcher with rope climbs at regionals. Like, this happens to some of the best athletes sometimes. But yes, you know, Laura and Haley are very obvious examples recently, and she's sick of it, basically. Yeah, I was thinking that, Ryan, too. Unfortunately, sex sells and Haley's brand is uh, innocence, not sexy. There wasn't in that scroll that you went through. There wasn't one um, picture just like completely focused on her ass. So maybe. Yeah. And, and, and I want to tell you, I give her fucking props for that, like crazy props for that. Not that, not that the people who are doing that have any issues with it, but uh, taking the road less traveled is uh, is is pretty cool. I admire that. Hence, hence this podcast. Okay. Uh, any while we're on eighty, uh, Haley Adams. Any any are there any big significant camp changes? I know I'm, I'm hearing the rumblings that Roman is over at Mayhem and has a new coach over there. But um, can you tell us about that and then any other camp changes? We'll, we'll start with Roman. What, what's going on with Roman? Is he here now in the United States? This is him. He's This is home? Yeah. I mean, I, I know that last year was stressful for him in many ways. It was you know, obviously massive to be able to compete in the games, to get to the U.S. and, and do that. But he's a, you know, he, I, I think of Roman as a, a very simple guy. And I know that his wife and kids and dogs and and their well-being is very important to him. And I think that that was a stress for him last year. And this year he's been able to bring them over. And yeah, they've moved to Cookville and he's training down there in Cookville. And <clears throat> I I don't know that they've made any kind of official announcement about who his coach is or what they're doing. But it seems to me that that it's it's highly likely that he has a new coach which is a big deal actually because if that's the case because uh, he's had the same coach for a long time. I, I went over to um, the Clydesdale Media Podcast. I listened to two of them yesterday on the YouTube station. Uh, the second one I listened to was uh, Scott and Kat Shear, Scott Schweitzer and Scott, 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 Scott Shear. No, Scott, Scott Schweitzer and Kat Shear uh, interviewing uh, Logan Ewing, Ewing. How old is Logan? 12? Yeah. Early 20s. Uh, Logan said that working out with Roman is in, these are, I'm paraphrasing, by the way, I'm paraphrasing, completely paraphrasing my, my analysis. It's off by five, five degrees. 
Uh, Logan, Logan said that working out with Roman is completely insane. He said that Roman has changed the scene at Mayhem. And he said, and the implication was in a positive way, but it's added like some crazy fire over there. Um, he said that Facundo is training him. I'm also trying to get Facundo on on December 27th with Brian and I. Um, it sounds like uh, the big thing with Roman is his recovery is insane in between workouts. That he will flop, to go as hard as he can, flop to the ground, be doing the fish, and uh, three, two, one, go. He gets up and goes. Uh, does that comport with what you're hearing? Yes and yes and no. Um, like I said, when the, in situations like these, uh, you hear certain things, you see certain things. Maybe you think that you know certain things, but I always like to be a little bit patient in that regard. Like if Facundo is coaching Roman, um, and and I and I, I mean Snorri is definitely involved, works with Roman. Like they'll they'll make that known when they're ready to make it known. And we can speculate all we want, and maybe he's doing some mayhem programming while he's there, but I'll wait to hear from them for certain in that regard. I do think that that is the case. And like I said, if that is the case, it's pretty of pretty big interest to me because he'd previously been being coached by Nick Fowler. And from what I can tell, that he, Nick, Nick Fowler, who's one that, of the coaching that's brute, legends, brute strength. Yeah. I mean, look, Nick. Is one of the uh, coaches get a lot more attention now than they did five and ten and fifteen years ago in CrossFit, and they're a lot more well known. They're a lot more public facing. A lot of times, they're working with more athletes, and obviously, the media, the way the media's evolved, has had a big thing to do with that. Yeah, there's Nick. Nick's been around forever. Uh, he kind of, in some many ways, he is brute strength. Oh, he uh, got old like me, like everyone does. Oh, okay. Not just but us. I got actually to spend some time with him at Rogue this year. And get to know him a little bit outside of the coaching realm. Incredible human, amazing storyteller. And he like he's seen so many things. And he actually like he's very cultured in in terms of uh, world travels and experiences. In addition to being very very experienced in the coaching scene, so I think he was a really great fit for Roman. And they worked together for like I said, as far as I know, at least from 2017 through Rogue this year, they were working together and. They, I mean, it got him to second place at the games in his first live experience there. I already talked about with Karen Frey how even if you've competed at the games before or been good enough to qualify for a couple of years in Roman's case and hasn't made it there, you're going to learn something in that first year. I mean, it's really rare that someone comes in their first year and wins, wins the games. But we have seen people come in their first year and take second at the games. And some of the people who've done that, like Rich, went on to win a bunch of times, like Tia went on to win a bunch of times, like Fraser went on. So like he's in a pretty rare company of showing up to your first live games and taking second place. A few, a few little mistakes here and there that I don't think necessarily had to do with fitness, but just experience maybe cost him from winning it this year. So he has the potential to win the games and he's made a big change in, in his coaching environment. So I have a, that is to me is something very significant. Uh, who, who else does uh, uh, Patrick Clark is saying Facundo coaches Guy and Spencer. Who else does uh, Facundo coach? I don't think Spencer, but I think he coaches uh, Guy and Lazar of men of, of high. Oh wow, men. Lazar too. Uh -huh. Which is a, another reason why it's somewhat, um, you know, critical. Like when people were talking about Haley potentially going to HWPO, the obvious point of conflict would be like, well, Haley wants to podium at the games. HWO's premier athlete, female athlete at least, is Mal O'Brien. She's defending a podium position at the games how's that going to work if they're going to be both be a coach in the same training program you know the hwbo team is going to be interested in getting mal from second to first and also getting haley from seventh or eighth to third um what's that dynamic going to be like well if you're talking about you know one guy coaching three athletes who are all in the top 10 the last year similar questions can be asked uh, I, I also um, it, Logan said something very interesting about uh, Roman's banana habit. He said at the quarterfinals, <laughs> in one day, Roman Krenikov ate eight eight a t e e i g h t eight eight bananas consumed. I'll go with consumed. Uh, uh, take two. Uh, there is a story that Roman Krennikov consumed eight bananas uh, during the corner finals in one day. 
do you, do you have any as, as a coach do you have any um thoughts on that type of uh, banana consumption during uh, high level competition better than eight snickers bars okay fine all right i don't know. <laughs> i uh, heard sevon has a banana habit that's a banana hammock i got a banana hammock <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and I also heard Roman's uh, English is coming along. Any proof of that? Well, I mean, I'm sure it is. <clears throat> you know, I uh, spent some time living in a country that I didn't speak the language of originally. And when you're constantly surrounded by people who don't speak the same language as you, it comes along. Uh, you also took uh, French for 12 years. In I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> You 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 sprink uh, you speak you speak a defense. Yeah. I don't really speak it very well, but I still understand it a bit. Could you? It, it, uh, the, do they still have that event, the French Throwdown? Yeah, and I'm like it's. I think it's one of the best run ab- events in the world, and I have, for a variety of different reasons, been unable to get to it so far. So I'm hopeful to get there eventually. Is that Daniel Chaffee's event? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Daniel. There's a uh, come on, bring Brian out there. No, no, he has tried. We've we've spoken many times, and I've been able to help him a little bit from remotely, but I haven't been able to be there for it yet. And I think that as Daniel, stuff definitely still involved, but as he's gotten more and more responsibilities within the affiliates and uh, international side of CrossFit, that there are some other people, uh, particularly Julian and Miriam, who have uh, elevated to take a lot of the responsibility for that competition. I um. I, I want to continue along this path of uh, camp changes, and I have some more questions. I do also want to save some time. I watched also on Clydesdale Media, uh, Scott Schweitzer. He has a live riff show. I think it's probably one of the best shows that they do there. And he speaks about his departure from Morning Chalk Up also. And I did a show, 40, minute, 40 minutes of a show, uh, talking about uh, Patrick Clark, Tommy Marquez, and Brian's departure and what's going on over there and uh, the ascent of – Lauren Khalil. I think you will find that show interesting, um, but I but I also do have the cliff notes for it, and we'll get Brian's uh, response on that here in a minute. Um, yeah, that show. It's, it's a great show. It moves very quickly. Okay, uh, before we get to that, um, any any other camp changes before I uh, uh, that you want to give up or do you want to make me keep digging? Any anything else? Okay, I'll so. keep digging. Fine, be that way. Gabby Magawa, uh, several months ago, you reported that she was leaving Morocco or Malawi or Mallorca. She, no, Mallorca. She, she's still in Mallorca. Okay. She and has, that's John Singleton's camp, right? The program is his camp. Mallorca is not his camp. There's okay. other places to train in Mallorca besides where the program trains. And I, I believe that Gabby and Christoph like it in Mallorca. They did travel around Europe a little bit and have done some other things. I know she was up in Iceland for a little while doing some training. No shit. Yeah. Gabby went to Iceland? This a couple months ago. <clears throat> um, to, to get it with uh, Katrin and Annie? And yeah, they were doing some training together, yeah. I think uh, – but also, you know, maybe she's doing some stuff with Snorri there. I'm not sure. I think that, um, you know, Christoph was just in London with the Hustle Made crew doing a, a promotion there. I'm not sure if Gabby went with him. So they're, they're traveling around a little bit in Europe. It's not that difficult to travel around. But – they're still in Mallorca. I think they're training at a different gym. Um, why not I, Dubai? Why not Dubai for Gabby? It, it's close enough. I think they're really happy in the Mediterranean island there. Fitty K, nice. Fitty K. Wouldn't she have won that? Oh, why didn't she go compete in Dubai? Yeah. Uh, you had to do the qualifier, and maybe she didn't want to do the qualifier this year. I think that it's some of the athletes maybe were used to getting an invite to that. She did, you know, she did very well there last year, and maybe she just didn't want to do the qualifier. What rumors have you heard about what camp she could be going to? Whose programming is she doing? These are very simple, straightforward questions. <laughs> I guess they are. Um, this goes back to what you were saying earlier about you don't want to speculate or you don't want to – first we need to hear it from the horse's mouth before you move forward on it. About – Gabby? Yeah. I yeah, I publicly. You know, if if she tells me what's what's going on but she doesn't want to make it well known, then I will respect that. What if you had a conversation with her and she told you and she didn't say whether you could make it public or not? Would you just assume you could? I would ask her. Okay, you're a good dude. 
Um, what is going on with uh, uh, Patrick Vellner? Is he uh, how how is he doing? Uh, I know Rogue was um, was it Rogue or the where he was Rogue the one where they did the clean and jerks and and he was about and he could have won it and he had the kind of the last two reps the shoulder overhead issue. Yes. Uh, how, have you talked to him and how is he doing um, since then? And is he getting his shit together? And are we going to see him do another year? I yes, uh, I think he's been very clear about that. I also think that he's competing. Uh, I, I believe he's been announced to compete at Wadapalooza for maybe both the individual and the team competition. Wow, and his hair's short. Look how short his hair is. He's on vacation, but still getting on my holiday. Yep. Heavy on the bug bites and humidity, right but still getting it on in my holiday. And it's, you know, this is going to be interesting. Wadapalooza is going to be very interesting to see. He's a three-time defending champion on the individual side. He's also doing a team there this year. Obviously, their team is very formidable with Vellner and Adler and Fikowski. And, uh, so That's be- the team? Vellner, Adler, and Fikowski? Uh-huh. Holy shit. I'll he's going to do, he's gonna do team for two days and then go individual? Other way around. Individual, individual and then team. Is first, the team is the premier this year. The teams of three. And they announced... Well, that's a fuck up. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I'm actually not sure. The, the announced, but I'm impressed at the attempt. I'm impressed at the attempt. These are the teams that have been announced for men's team of three by Wadapalooza. Actually, so, and I want to take that back because if, if, it was, if it was team first, he might not do both, right? But it's individual and there's less at stake. Okay, I, I strike that. Dylan Walensky over there knows exactly what he's doing. Walensky? Well, w- Malinsky. Malitsky. Walitsky. Ma. Okay. Ma. Malitsky. Okay. Do you want to hear some of these teams? Uh, yeah, but first, so 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 we have we have high hopes for Velner before we close that door. I'm working on, as you have asked me to do, my uh, power rankings, which we'll do before the open. Okay. And yeah, I've seen nothing from Velner to to make me want to uh, change where I have him on the power rankings, which is you know, or at least remove him from the top five. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me hear some of these teams at Wadapalooza. What what are the dates for Wadapalooza? My mom keeps asking. I think it's – we'll just get it right. Uh, it's the Thursday, Friday. Is it 12th, 12th and 13th? Okay. That, that was, and so 12 and 13 are the individuals. 14 and 15 are the teams for elite. Those and are, and, different and have the, do, have the doors closed game. on participation? No. Okay. Wadapalooza keeps the doors open. And there's a lot of invites and things can change up to the last minute. So when I say these are the announced teams on Wadapalooza's Instagram, obviously they're not the only teams. Some of these teams could still potentially change. And there okay. are other teams that Wadapalooza knows are coming that they have not announced yet. And how do you know that? Great. Yeah. Well, I, I mean. Oh, Colton, just, uh, Colton and Tetlow both just um, confirmed for tomorrow's show going to be a wild that's show right tomorrow. since you already yeah. promised the people that yeah good point good point i do it like some of the news outlets i promise and then i make announcements and then backfill we'll just do this quick. chandler smith noah olson travis mayer wow okay uh last that's that's an old team from last year defending champs okay oh wow okay uh scott saxon and spencer panchik wow you know that about scott they announced it on on their look it's right there wow Wow. Rich Froning, Sam Cornway, Tyler Christoffel. Holy shit. Fikowski, Vellner, Adler. Ricky Garrard, Tim Paulson, Matt DeLugos. There's never been a team competition like this. Joshua Alchamo, Jorge Fernandez, Sam Dancer. Don't know who they are. Uh, Joshua Alchamo and Jorge Fernandez were the Invictus males last year that took third place at the games, and you know Sam Dancer. Oh, yeah, and Jorge. I hugged Jorge. That's the guy that's like hugging a stack of wood. Okay. I know him. Ben okay. Smith, Alex Smith, Dane Smith. What? What? Really? Cole Sager, Jason Hopper, James Sprague. Those are the, wow. eight, those are the eight men's teams that have been announced. Wait, tell me that Hopper, Sprague, and who? Down Pepper? Cole Sager. Oh, no Down Pepper. Down Pepper hasn't been announced on any team yet. I. <clears throat> How come they're all dudes? They're just dudes teams? It's male teams of three and female teams of three. Separate There's events. Separate events. Wow. Crazy. So they, you know, they've been a- announcing athletes and teams for weeks and weeks, maybe months even. Look at what was the date of this? November something. 
So they're just rolling them out. There's more that will be announced. And then they also had the qualifier, the top 20 individual men, women, teams of three men, teams of three women through the qualifier are also eligible to be in the field. And so when, and if you look at, like we're talking about the men, just as an example, Aniola Kai, Alexander Anagaski, and Pablo Cazales were the top qualifying team. That's a Spanish team, the two, two guys from the training culture, plus Aniola Kai. There's a team with uh, Dennis Samsonov and Philip Muscarella on it. Their team took like fourth or fifth last year. They, they won't do well. Well, that's what, that's what you would have thought last year too, but they actually did do well. They so, won't do top 10 this year. Okay, they were fourth last year. They beat Rich Froning's team. Oh, well, that's interesting. They beat who, was on, who was on Rich's team last year? Angelo and Luke Parker. Wow. I, obviously, Sam Cornway and Tyler Christoffel are better than those two guys. So in theory, they're better. But I'm going to blame saying, uh, uh, Angelo. Teams, I'm going to blame Angelo. I'm just saying there are teams that, that came through the qualifier that can also be relevant in these competitions. Crazy. Hey, so if you're a big name in the sport, you don't even need to do the qualifier at Wadapalooza. Just send over. There's that. rules about it. I think your team has to have two games athletes from the previous year or something like okay. that. Okay. They invite, like, if you've podiumed at Wadapalooza in a certain number of years or if you've won Wadapalooza ever, there's like a bunch of different things. But there are a lot of ways to pre qualify, and there's always open spots for the qualifier. Uh, coffee pods and wads, Pedro going two days really opened the door for people who don't want the intensity of a full four day event. And for those who want to do indie and team, by the way, did you know he's been doing a podcast for three years now? I did know. I saw, I helped Seemed celebrate like a lot of people were surprised by that. Yeah. Celebrate it. I was surprised that his, I was surprised that the name of the show, I thought it was coffee wads and pods. I thought his name was Pedro. His name is Pedro. Uh, Elisa Carr Radau. Sydney announces that on Clydesdale podcast two days ago, Mike. Oh, what was the announcement? Is Sydney McGlishan being there? Is she there also? How come yeah. you only how come you only focused on the um boys? How come you haven't given us any great girls teams? I don't like, think T- Tia, what, Annie, and Katrin are going. I heard that on a I team. I don't think that the um caliber of the women's teams of three is is worth this show. To the men. Is noteworthy yeah. for this show, for this misogynistic There's, There are show. some good good teams for sure. I think what they're referring to is that one of the teams that was announced for Wadapalooza has changed since the announcement. And so, and like, like you said, and like we talked about, the door is open, the, the, the rosters are fluid all the way up until the first event starts at Wadapalooza. So, oh, you know, everything's most of the fluid people in the great announced, country of the United States. Mm-hmm. Trigger yeah. word. Most of the, uh, Sam Stewart was on the podcast, Mickey Smith and Jamie Hadon. Well, if that's a team that's competing there, that's a great example of a team that I don't know how they got in because I, uh, unless they're in the qualifier and I just didn't see that. What about, but, um, what about my boy, a future games champ, um, uh, Jay Crouch? Is he going to be there? Not that I've seen. Jesus, says the guy with the cowboy hat. You son of a bitch. Sevon looking like a legit terrorist. Did I ever tell you about the time when I flew into uh, Miami? And I got taken into secondary. Oh, yeah. The lads, they did qualify that Irish team. I have them on the list here. They were 17th in the qualifier. I got taken into secondary at uh, Miami International Airport. And the guy says, "Uh, how long were you in the Syrian army? I'm like, excuse me? How long were you in the Syrian army? I was never in the Syrian army. How long were you in the Syrian army? Answer us. Then, Then he brings over a lady who starts yelling at me. We know you were in the Syrian army. I'm like, listen, assholes. I'm a fucking libtard from San Francisco. I fucking hate guns. And international soccer. <laughs> I don't hate international soccer, but it's close. It's not quite to hate. It's a good game. Soccer? Dude, you right Caleb, you would fucking love anything from your equity experiment. That's the whole thing. That's part of one of the... the <laughs> That's one, of the, uh, that's one of the that's one of the um uh effects of being in an equity experiment. You're just happy to get, get like sheets. You don't even need to be clean. Yeah, like I, I'll, I'll, all the Netflix specials. We'll watch those for sure. Yeah, everything you've, you've seen it all. Hey, is there anything that's banned there that you're not allowed uh, to watch? Like that they don't let the military guys watch? Like some like Black Mirror or something? Something that might scare you? Yeah, we just use a VPN and get around it. So oh, all right. It doesn't matter. 
the great advancements of the U.S. military. Uh, yes. Okay. Let, let, let's talk about that real quick. How about the $40 tier comp shirts? I think I learned that from uh, Lauren Khalil's show over on the morning chalk up. Um, you want to talk about that? Oh, shit. I, I think that this – I'm not entirely sure of the details, but I think that you could – opt into this like if you're competing yes. in the elite division as an individual or a team you could choose to be a part of this um uh, don't worry opt- don't worry brian out. i got this i watched the lauren khalil show in the morning check up i got this one thank you oh, you're welcome uh tears paying athletes 50 percent of jersey sales the jerseys are 39.99 they're on sale now you must pre-order 130 athletes as brian said have opted in to be participating um what uh the the, the the sort of the buzz around it is is that Noble was charging sixty dollars and giving the athletes twenty dollars thirty three percent and Tier has stepped up. If you listen to that, um, what uh, the Lauren Khalil show, I for, forget the guy's name that she was talking with. He looks like he's from a cowboy movie, but um, basically what they were saying is is Tier is here and they're just fucking taking over. And it's funny because I do just see them everywhere. I just see them everywhere. Uh, former, hu- uh, uh, they're, they're a huge player, I guess, in the swimming space. Uh, if you watch the Olympics, I guess they got their shit all over it with the goggles and the fancy stuff. I, I noticed their shoes because Colton was wearing them, and I thought they were beautiful. I still don't own a pair. Um, but uh, you, you can order a shirt now, and uh, it'll get your house. I don't think they will be available on site. I don't know that for a fact, but that was the implication from the show. But you could tell that uh, Lauren... And uh, the gentleman she was doing the show with at the Morning Chocolate were excited about it. Not excited about it, too. It's cool. Even though with 130 athletes, I think some athletes will only sell three shirts, but it's okay. But they have the technology to do this um, ahead of time, which is really cool. Okay, so Brian's refusing to give us any news about Gabby Magawa. Uh, we know about Vellner. Anything else besides Fikowski, um, uh doing a Wadapalooza? Any news on the great Brent Fikowski front? That you'd like to share and any explanation of his performance in Dubai? Was he happy with it? I think uh, actually Nico Rono is making a, a documentary a documenting Brent's trip there. And we'll be able to learn a lot more about him and his experience through that. Uh, I think overall he wasn't uh, <clears throat> too. I mean, I think he was satisfied with his performance and effort. Uh, like I said, you know, the margins were quite small. A couple of things go a little differently that had nothing to do with him, and he may have won that competition. I think he was certainly intent on winning it. He was in the lead for a majority of it. Um, I was the thing that I, and I talked about this on the broadcast, the thing that I was most impressed with by Brent at that competition. I mean, look, there were a lot of young guys in that competition, and I, I, you know, they can learn a lot from this guy, not just about how to compete, how to prepare to compete, but how to handle adversity. Obviously, he was incredibly disappointed with the, you know, he knew exactly what he was doing at the end of that workout. He knew he had to go if he wanted to win. He tried, didn't make it. He went back, he finished it, and he looked almost lifeless sitting there on the floor. Like, so, I mean, I can't even imagine how he's feeling. Like, just really bummed about the way that that played out, knowing that he had come so close and not done enough. And he stayed down there for like 30 seconds to a minute, maybe. And then he got up. And the very first thing that he did was find Fabian Benito and give him a hug and whisper was something in his ear. I heard he stomped on Fabian's foot to fuck with that barnacle that's growing on the side of Fabian's foot. And I think that that's something that uh, I, I haven't always seen from athletes in a lot of sports. In fact, like I even I know you make fun of me for this or whatever, but there was a really, really epic battle in the european championships for disc golf this year between two guys they like set all these records for being better than the field they shot some of the best rated rounds ever and at the end of the competition the guy who won which was a younger guy didn't go and congratulate the other guy on a great battle and i thought that was really kind of unfortunate like you know they were just raising each other's level and yeah he got the better you today say great job congratulations and then go deal with it on your own instead of just like forgetting about the other guy so i thought that was really good of brent how many people show by, – by the way, what you're looking at – I want to have a question for Brian. Um, hold this shot for a second, Caleb. Uh, how many – is um, is Frisbee golf um, bigger than CrossFit? Uh, I know that's hard. Well, more so here's fans? The thing. Here's the more thing. fans? More participants? I'm not sure. It's really okay. – it's, it's a great question. 
because none of those dipshits have, will, have, have reached out to will come on the show, and it, may, it just makes me think that they're morons. But but that's obviously self serving. Me saying that. Patrick's right. Moritz Fiebig also was a great show of sportsmanship for uh, Fabian. You know, they tied on points. They announced Fabian as the winner, and Moritz didn't look de defeated or disappointed at all. Even though I'm sure he was because he was so close, and he just held up that guy's hand, and it was cool. Does um, Moritz speak English? Yeah, really well. You should definitely okay. invite him on. I, I know. I guess getting guy. some hate mail for not having him on the show. Yeah, I think he'd be great to have on. Uh, Slevin, uh, cold bra, wood chopping accident would take care of that. You are looking at what I think is Fabian Benito's foot. Uh, someone sent me this. Uh, you need some nano twos, buddy. How does he compete with that thing? What causes that? Uh, uh, Caleb? Uh, it's like a bunion. I think it's just like you said, if you're wearing shoes that are super cramped, um, it'll fuck with your foot. That is that uh, a bone? Is that a bone? Yeah, it's basically a, like a bone spur that just grows out of the side of your foot. God, but I want to like, I want to feel that thing. But you know, this is like you know, you can pull up toe spacers recent, uh, the most recent post, and they'll show yeah. you a foot that looks like this, and they'll show you what a foot was meant to look like. And yeah, this is definitely a you know almost definitely a product of cramming your foot into a space it's not supposed to be in for too long over a long period of time. Hey, that's what happens if you wear nobles. I'm just speculating. Oh, Nike cause yeah, I I agree too. God, who fits in those Metcons? Who fits in those Metcons? That's what I think about most condoms I see though too. So whatever, it's just maybe I'm just different. I'm just different. <laughs> Okay, so 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 I, you know I'm hearing this thing in your voice, Brian, that Fakowski is sort of like going off uh, is going to become like a Miyagi. I was going to say Travis Mayer, but I don't want to be mean. But like he's just going to be showing up to events and, and accepting fifth place, but 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 imparting wisdom. Maybe I mean he very easily could have won Dubai, and that's okay. a big you know big competition. Obviously, it's not as big a competition, but he won in Egypt the month before. And I think Fikowski, you know, from what I know, at least, he has the intent of coming back uh, another year. And I would expect him to do better at the games next year. Maybe not podium, maybe not top five, but better than last year. I don't think that that was necessarily the best uh, representation of where his fitness actually is relative to the field. Not to take anything away from any of the guys that beat him. I just think it was one of those competitions where kind of everything that could have gone the wrong way for him did which happens sometimes. What what about Lazar Jukic? Is he going to have his fucking medical shit, his whatever, his chemical imbalance figured out by the time um, he gets to the CrossFit Games? What's going on with him? Have you talked to him? Lazar? Yeah. Lazar. Uh, <sighs> Allison yeah. NYC has spoken. Toe spacers can't fix that. I know. I, he needs the uh, wood chopping accident, I think. Um, Toe spacers that fix that. I love it. Hey, give it a shot. Don't be so negative, Allison. Yeah, I mean, Lazarus had a tough offseason. You know, obviously things didn't go the way he was expecting at Rogue, not, nor did they go the way he was expecting at Dubai. And but, I mean, his car is breaking down. Something's wrong with his car. Uh, so it's, not, it's not him. He's capable. Something's, okay, well, the thing that happened at Rogue would be like your car is working great and you're driving on a road and you go around a bend and there's a pothole there and you have no okay. chance to react and you blow out a tire. Okay. So you say he's jinxed. He needs an exorcism. It's just everything. I'm not sure. I mean, there is at a the question. games. The bike goes in too early at rogue fucking uh, rolls an ankle and, and uh, at Dubai, he has a fucking electrolyte malfunction. Uh, well, I'm not sure what happened to him in the stairwell of the Burj. Khalifa. I just told you I'm a doctor, Caleb, tell him it was electrolyte. It was neurological. He didn't, he didn't take his LMNT or whatever that shit is. Yep. I agree. Concur on the diagnosis. Thank you. Be friendly. I am being friendly. Uh, Brian's getting uh, updates on, on, on the topics in real time from his spy. I mean, his sources. Sorry, this is Lazar right now. <laughs> is it? No. Oh. But I have spoken to Lazar. I think he's, I mean, yeah, he's, like you, is aware of the fact that things haven't necessarily gone great. And he's trying to figure out why. Because, you know. That thing that happened to him in the Capitol and the thing that happened to him in Burj Khalifa stair run, are, is some, those are things he doesn't want to happen again. What, so happened, to the, to, what happened to the Oh, the Capitol. He also at the end. Okay, right, 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 yeah. right, right. And in that case, he had to turn around and do a workout two hours later. 
and he figured it out. Maybe he wasn't great the rest of the day, but he still managed a great finish at the games. In the case of the Burj Khalifa, he never recovered from that. If you, I mean, you could just go watch him. Yeah, he had one event win, but watch him compete in any other event and line it up with previous versions of Lazar that we've seen in Dubai and at the games the last two years at semifinals when he beat BKG. And you just see that it's not the same guy. And he, so he's taking some time to figure, to try to figure that out with nutritionists or doctors or his training team or whatever. Um, and I, my hope for Lazar is basically that maybe it takes a couple of weeks to get things back organized, gets into a good training rhythm, hopefully doesn't do any more competing until he needs to, which, uh, you know, open and, uh, and quarterfinals, he should have the same approach as he did last year, which is just get through those unless they have a dramatic effect on the worldwide ranking system and distribution of game spots and then show up to semifinals. He doesn't have to win semifinals. Okay. Uh, and then, prepare for the games because i think that for him you know he improved by one spot between 2021 and 2022 and i think that he would want to improve by at least one spot this year also all right but it's gonna be hard to do the men's field is going to continue to get more difficult and and, okay and and, and maybe maybe a little easier also just because as the older guys wane a little bit there'll be some shuffling They'll be shuffling, but I still think, like I said, as I'm looking through these, uh, you know, top 100s and, and trying to come into the season with a list, <laughs> it's really, it's like, it's, it's pretty tough. There's, a, there are a lot of guys. Uh, before I go into the um, this uh, show that I saw uh, Scott Schweitzer do on the Clydesdale podcast, uh, one last question: Did CrossFit get the podium right? At the games? At the games, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we see first, second, and third at the CrossFit Games? It was ju- who, who took Justin, Roman, and... Ricky. Ricky, Justin, Roman, Ricky. Is, is that right? Where was Vellner? Sixth. Justin, Roman. Quant, uh, Adler, Roman. Ricky. Are, 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 wow, Quant, Samuel Quant. Wow, fourth place. We're going to be talking about him this year, huh? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, you, you're happy with that, Justin, Roman, Ricky? Do you have any he- heavy-handed criticism? No. Um, no. Okay. And I think <clears throat> at the games next year, if you're a male who wants a podium, that's the lineup you're looking at. Like it's not it's it's not a lock that those three guys will will podium again. But if you want to make it on the podium, those are the athletes and the caliber of athletes and the consistent performance across the weekend that I'm looking and saying, if that's what I want, that's what I have to be better than. Should we have an events ranking show? Like uh, games, Dubai, Rogue, Wadapalooza. Yeah, and if we did do that, how would semifinals work in there? Because the semifinals in themselves are pretty impressive events, right? I think that this would be a really good – it could actually be really fun. And what we would do is have like some different criteria. So you might say caliber of field. Hot dogs. Um, Available beer and food selections on site. Access to athletes. um, The caliber of programming. Cost Uh, of tickets. Did they include Savan in the production? Like, you know, and you might rank these in different tiers. So you might be first in product in being included for Wadapalooza, last in being included for the games, but the games might be first in programming and last in, you know, or whatever else. So, and then we could have a composite ranking after that. I think the categories we came up with are perfect. So we'll just use those hot dogs for sure. Okay. I like it. Okay. Uh, So you do like the idea. I think it could be fun and I think it could be cool. Um, to include you know a couple different people in that who, uh, as well. Uh, Jessica R- 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 Jessica Rivera Jessica Rivera Sevan, didn't you come up with the CrossFit Wars? Why are they taking your idea and not including? They're including me. I'm just being I'm just being a baby. I just want all the viewers and money on my station. They're including me, and um, not not only that, but it really wasn't my idea. It was someone's done this before. I remember there was something before where athletes would go and compete against each other. And I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was in 2014 or 15. It was, uh, someone attempted to do this. And then I was just joking around. There, there was this um, athlete named Jason Hopper who's fallen off the map and gone into obscurity. But he was on the show once. And I was I, I he's was He's fallen off the map in terms of he hasn't come on your show in a while. He has not fallen well, off the listen, map. He's fallen off of, compl- yeah, he has fallen off into obscurity. What? Yeah. 
No. We, 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 don't, we don't even talk about him. We don't talk about him. No one talks about him. We literally we just listed the top six guys in the game. He was seven. Okay, fine. We, we don't even talk about him anymore. We, there's nothing to talk about. You're going to talk about him when we see my power rankings in, 20, in 2023. We're, we're not even allowed to talk about him. I got a text from uh, uh, Matt Fraser the other day. Don't talk about Hopper unless you ask me. I haven't gotten that text. That's because you don't text with Matt Fraser. Okay, here we go. Over uh, the camera and, and just knock on Justin okay. Medeiros' house. He answers the door. We say, hey, dude, tomorrow at noon, we go there at noon. That's 24 hours from now, you fucking mullet-wearing motherfucker. We're going to meet We're gonna meet here in the front yard. There's going to be a truck, and we're going to film this, and it's going to be three fucking workouts, me against you. And then you'll look at the camera and be like, and if you want to watch this shit, pony up 10 bucks. You have 24 hours. This will be tomorrow. Dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Brian, would you pay to watch that? Jason and Justin? Yeah, 10 <clears throat> bucks. Just have Jason just go over and call fucking Justin out in his front yard. Probably not. Oh, you're a dickhead. You ruined my idea. You want to pay for that, Brian? I'd Brian pay for is that not shit. a good wingman. Brian, Make that noted. <laughs> what would Caleb have said? He'd have been like, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, for sure, dude. Yeah, totally, bro. <laughs> yeah, Brian does have a hard beard in that, in that clip. That's crazy. Bringing it back for Wadapalooza. No shaving between now and then. Okay. Uh, I swear too much. Um, Scott Schweitzer, I, I did a show the other day where I was talking about basically the changes going on over at the morning chalk up and a lot of information came in, nothing that I can um, validate as of yet. Um, and, uh, and there's some incredible hard workers over there that, that, uh, institution has been around for quite some time, started off as a newsletter by Justin LaFranco and has turned into, then it turned into a pawn of, uh, Andrew, Wiseman? Fuck, I forget his name. Basically became a tool, became the mouthpiece for CrossFit, owned by CrossFit, in, in my opinion. Uh, just was just parody, whatever CrossFit wanted them to say. Basically damage control. And then, uh, I, since then, I have heard uh, rumors that their ties with CrossFit have been severely damaged or and or severed. That there's been some sales uh, of, of parts of ownership of the company. And now Brian, Patrick, and Tommy Marquez aren't there, but Lauren is still killing it over there. And so Scott Schweitzer came on and did a show. Have you seen this, Brian? No, but I, uh, I've been warned that not, and that maybe not everything is uh, accurate that he's talking about here. So I don't know what clips are going to play, and I don't know if that's what's being referred to. But I would. Well, to, well, he's just giving he's giving his perspective. There's no clips to play, but he's giving his perspective on. He basically said that he used to. Uh, um, he, the, the show is about why him and uh, Cl uh, Clydesdale Media and him uh, parted ways. He does take ownership for it at the end. He basically says, hey, I'm a kind of guy who wants to like create my own vision and pursue my own vision, and that's basically what I learned when I was over there. He gives great accolades to – he says the most support he got over there w uh, was from – uh, Tommy and Brian and continues to be from Tommy and Brian. He said, well, he oh, I take it back. Everything he said was accurate. <laughs> he, 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 he said that when he was there, Tommy and Brian helped them uh, navigate the waters. And then when he said he left, he felt like um, it, it got a little, my words, not his, a little cold between him and the morning chalk up, but that Tommy and Brian continued to support him uh, with his new endeavors. When he, when he was there, um, him and Kat Shear, it sounds like, um, picked up and picked up and dusted off an old morning chalk up show called the bottom line that I think Lauren still does. And it, it had been dormant for like 18 months or so. And so uh, Scott and Kat picked that show up and they ran with it for five months. Uh, he also said that uh, Brian came on the show a lot uh, to, to help push that show forward. He said it was a complete pleasure to work with Brian. I wouldn't say a complete uh, pleasure to work with Brian, but if there were like 10 criteria, eight of them, he would score really high. Hot dogs low. And two, two of them uh, extremely low. Um, uh, um, he, said, he said they were a great asset to the project. Uh, let's see. Uh, he did give, he did say that Justin, he said he, he said communication was tough there. My words, not his. That was basically in summation. All the issues he had was communication. He felt like he didn't get a lot of direction over there, not a lot of support, and that it was basically a little bit uh, chaotic. 
And uh, that was where a lot of things uh, fell through the cracks and he felt a lot of frustration when he was there. He did say that Justin did help him um, understand uh, how to make more potent uh, Instagram posts. Um, and, and he's just riffing, which is what's cool. He's just kind of like talking off the top of his head and, and, and he's just kind of painting this picture for you. It's an extremely authentic show. It's it's um, he eventually left because the content they were making. These are this is my interpretation of it. These aren't quotes. I'm not a real journalist. Eventually, uh, Scott and the Clydesdale media team left the morning chalk up because they weren't getting the the media that they made published the when and where and how they wanted it to. So what it sounded like is Scott would make 10 pieces and it was only after asking 20 times for them to get published on the morning chalk up two or three or five of them would get published and the other five would fall through the cracks and he wouldn't get the feedback he wanted or direction. Um, he said that uh, the, the, the communication between, between teams was bad, meaning there's, so when you're in a media team, there's writers, there's publishers, there's distributors, there's content makers. And that is a huge problem, by the way. That, that is exactly what's going on over at CrossFit Inc. now, too. They have a massive ego communication problem. And that can happen if you really don't have uh, – um, you really need strong leadership. Creatives are assholes. Media people in general are assholes. 51% for sure. Yeah. Um, insecure little fucking twats. Uh, communication um, – once again, he, and he reiterated Tommy and Brian were super supportive. Um, he said that when he left the morning chalk up, um, the, it sounds like the only thing that really was uh, everything worked positive. You know, nine out of ten things have been, have been better. It sounds like he's a little disappointed because since he left morning chalk up, uh, his uh, relationship with Lauren Khalil has gotten a little cold and dark, and it sounds like he misses that um, friendship he had with her. And uh, the screen. and so, oh, there we go. Cool. So I guess they lit a fire and they warmed the relationship back up, but it's a, but it's a really good, it's a, it's cool. That riff show is really cool. Uh, don't take my word for it. It moves very fast. It's an amazing companion for the, uh, assault bike. Um, Brian, did, did you leave the morning chalk up because for strictly because the reason, because Barbend offered you more money? Did you um, – wh why did you leave the morning chalk up? You were there for so long. You were a staple there. Let me start with something easier. Hold on. Watch this. Watch this mastery in, in uh, questioning. Watch me massage Brian's taint here, people. Watch this. Brian, was it a difficult decision to leave morning chalk up? How do you know I like taint massages? <laughs> I'm very smart. Uh, I'm very, yes. And, and, and what were some of the uh, factors for your uh, switching um, – uh, publishing outlets that's a tough question um are, are you are you happy are you happy I, I, I know you're a guy who likes high level communication i'll say this the biggest okay. the biggest challenge for me in leaving the morning chalk was giving up what i was doing with lauren on the bottom line episodes no shit yeah i felt like that had um a late august september october <clears throat> that we had fallen into a really good rhythm where when I hated was, the fact of how often you were on that show. I lied to you. I used to be like, oh, that's great that you work with them. Uh, you know, that we had just fallen into a good rhythm of when something popped up, newsworthy, controversial, um, uh, that we could have a conversation about it that I thought was doing a decent job of putting things in perspective. Most of the time something happens, people want to have a, a, the first blush reaction to it, and then that thing gets blown out of proportion. I thought that she did a good job of, of setting up situations where I could talk about the fact that, yes, this happened to this person, but keep in mind that this isn't that out of the usual. And a lot of times there's things going on behind the scenes that we don't necessarily see publicly that we should keep in mind instead of being super critical of this or that other person. Uh, so I don't have as clear of a uh, platform to do that anymore. And I don't know that she has <clears throat> a cons as a consistent or reliable um, person that she can produce those shows with regularly and so that was difficult for me to give up and when i was coming over i did ask you know what the likelihood of having something like that at bar bend was and i knew that it would and at least in the short term it wouldn't be happening so that was that was tough uh, and, and not only that that you guys could go on quickly because i would if something came up you and lauren could uh, circle the wagons and get something produced very quickly yeah uh 
and someone asked why I don't do it on my own. I guess I could, and like how Scott kind of does that. But the main the main two reasons are, I don't, I don't um, really want to do any of the back end work. I'm not very good at it. It's frustrating for me. And I think that Patrick I just, will do all that for you. He would. I know. And I and I also think I just am better in an environment with someone like you or like her who steers the conversation. And, and and was there a straw that broke the camel's back over there on why you left? By the way, you guys, no, we didn't even talk about this ahead of time. Brian has no idea. I'm not sure how much trouble I'm going to get in. He has no idea that I was going to. Uh, I'm saving this for the end of the show. You notice? Smart, right? Uh, was it? Uh, what was the question? Was it difficult to leave? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hold on. Oh, Time's shit. up now? Oh, shit. I got to take the kids to tennis. Time's up. Shit. Tennis. Is that is that is that what's going on? Tennis. Nine o'clock. Fuck. Okay, guys, listen. I gotta go. Phew. Oh, Son God. of a bitch. Forgot to kids have tennis at nine a.m. Too much time on Gabby Magawa. I will have Brian back on very shortly. I promise you, within the next seven days. Probably in exactly seven days. And we will get to the bottom of this. Don't forget tomorrow, <laughs> 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we'll be doing Fit Wars. And uh, and then at 10 a.m., Hiller Fit Review. And then maybe after that, I'll go live. Oh, yes. We don't have a post-show You're scheduled yet. Hiller Fit Review at 10 a.m. Or Hiller Fit, whatever, the Fit Wars competition, not Hiller Fit Review. Don't, don't. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Brian has never been more thankful for tennis. Yes. Okay. Love you guys. Caleb, thanks for being here. Um, uh, they are ready to go. Okay. Here I come. Tell me what. Here I come. Huh. That's exactly what I said to her when I went to bed last night.